Amat uh, NetBeans. Before I create uh, the project, I will perform a few configurations so I can connect my IDE NetBeans to, to the database. This will allow us to easier uh, develop the, the application. So here in the service tag, I will go to the databases and uh, create a new connection to the database. We are going to use Oracle database. We will use Oracle theme and we will add the driver. Click on add. This is the driver we want. We click on open. It is already added. Uh, we add it again. We say next and uh, we check the configurations. Um, this will be the name of the schema. We say remember password and test the connection. So connection succeed. This means that uh, NetBeans sees the database in the port 1521. Everything is okay. We say next. Check the schema. Say finish. So now we have the connection to the database. Here will be tables. These are all the tables currently in the database. And uh, now we also need to check um, we, uh, the driver. Where else do we need the driver? We have the driver uh, in NetBeans, which allows to connect NetBeans to the database and, and allow us to work. Also, we will need the, the driver to be in the lib folder of the application server. Here it is. It's a good practice to put it there. But only when developing, if you are, uh, when we are in producing, in pro on production, we will need to put the put it uh, somewhere else also. But I'm not going to go through that now. Uh, so we are ready to start the project. Go new project. Select enterprise enterprise application. George's demo. Next, I don't want to use context and dependency injection. So, because context and dependency injection makes things easier, but uh, for this demonstration, I want to explain actually the whole uh, the whole process. So, so I will not enable context and dependency injection. I say finish. So here is our project. Here are the, both the EGB and the web module. Uh, I will start from the EGB module, creating uh, an entity. Which will be, let's say, an abstraction of the database. So I go to the persistence tab and I select entity class. And uh, for this example, let's make something something uh, simple. For example, uh, let's say record. We are going to save records in database, package, entities. Create the persistence unit automatically. Next. Data source. We will need to provide the data source. Let's say George's DS. People practice using the JDBC pre, uh, prefix, something like this, but it is not uh, mandatory. You can also do it like this. And select the connection. Here is the connection to our database and say OK. 
the strategy for now will be create later if needed we will change so let's say finish here is our entity an entity it must be annotated with uh, the entity annotation and it must has it must have uh, an ID so ID and the generated value feature uh, we can leave it and uh, also this override and methods also can be useful but let's add a couple of variables more for example an string And uh, I don't know, let's uh, create uh, another string. I want to keep uh, the things simple because uh, I don't want the video to be very long, so I'm going to do just the very basics. Column will allow us to edit the name and the other features of this of this uh, column I will use um, the attribute new label to make sure that this is a mandatory field see for the primary key is not needed but for uh, the other variables it is so this means that uh, these values are mandatory and uh, this entity is ready. Let's let's uh, try to map it to the database. Uh, so go to the configuration file, and in persistence XML, select the selection uh, the table creation strategy, and include those. Um, entities the thing is don't tick this one because this this does it automatically but uh, sometimes depends on the on the IDE uh, it doesn't work properly sometimes in some occasions so I like to I prefer to do it in manually we can check that everything is correct here here is our persistent unit the name of the persistence unit we will need it later so I'm going to copy it to the clipboard and we say save and now uh, before for, for uh, JPA to actually create that database when uh, the application builds we need to call the entity manager uh, somehow so I like doing this once at the beginning before I start so I'm going to create a session bin, which will be, let's say, the initializer of this database. So I go to Enterprise Java Bins, select session bin, I, and create a singleton, because singletons run, uh, are uh, built only once, when, when the application starts, and call it initializer, or let's say DB, Initializator session bins and uh, we don't need an interface view for this. Later we can erase this class if we want. It's just uh, to start the database to sorry to map that table to the database. So here we inject the persistence context. And the entity manager EM and 
for the persistence context we need to use unit name and the unit name will be the name of the persistence unit I copy to the clipboard and now that should be it. this uh, should uh, initialize the or initialize the process of creating the database once the singleton goes in memory <coughs> so let's let's test if this thing works go go first check the application server here we have glassfish application server is not initialized but we will initialize it now and say we can say clean and build but uh, we can also say run and uh, now the application server is starting and we expect it to uh, create the needed tables on the database thanks to the JPA annotations and the entity manager Uh, now the application is running it is started on the browser the, we can see the web module but let's go check the database this is the schema tables and we see record here it is it was created we can check if uh, the variables and here it is description and name that's it uh, now it would be a good idea to go back to the persistence XML and uh, change the creation strategy the generation table strategy to none in case we need to, I don't know, perform some changes or uh, or uh, actually shut down the server, sometimes it's needed, and so the database is not deleted and created again. Or so, so we just we will just save it with none. If we need, whenever we need to do a different action, we come here and we interact with this option. Anyway, let's continue. We have the let's say in somehow the persistence layer is ready to start uh, adding, adding data, data so we will go to the before we go to the front end we need to create some kind of bridge for accessing the data we will create a crude facade so in session beans package let's create a new session bean uh, let's call it crude facade uh, it is a good practice to use singleton because uh, singleton had created once and uh, there is less creation of objects in the in the memory but uh, because this is a demo I will use a uh, stateless because uh, it's easier and we don't have to add the, the locks so in singleton we need to add some locks so, but uh, to keep it simple for this demonstration we use stateless it's not but it, it is okay also so use an interface view we follow the principal program to an interface and not to a realization it's our crude facade so in our crude facade the first thing we need will be the persistence context persistence context the unit name is let's check it it is here persistence unit name entity manager entity manager and uh, let's add a very simple method public void uh, insert or yeah insert which takes a record here 
like this, record. And insert it into the database. To do this, this we just say em dot persist. That's it. So see, I'm not uh, doing any validation or anything. It's just, I'm just trying to keep the things simple for the demonstration. Uh, let's create a retrieve method. Public record. Uh, get record using uh, its ID actually let's check the use the primary type yes now we use an object so we'll use the worker one it's commonly used uh, em dot find and uh, we need to find a record class and we use the id to find it and we use the return statement here it will uh, let's check the return type of this method. Okay, it will return the instance. This is our crude facade for now. Let's uh, extract these things to the interface. So the local interface. We say okay. We extract these things here so we can uh, access from. Uh, from outside and uh, for now let's see we finished with the back end let's go to the front end here in our web application we will create first let me close this so it is easier to, to see what I'm doing create a new web service so go here to web services, rest web service from patterns, say next, <coughs> simple root resource, let's see what we have other options but this would be the simplest, uh, we can say web services resources. This will be the name of the package. I am going to copy it to the clipboard. I will need it later. And let's say finish. And it asks us uh, about uh, the configuration file. We want to automatically add the jersey adapter in web in web XML. So we say okay. Okay, here is the web service. As you see, a few, few methods automatically generated. We are going to delete them so we can start from the scratch. And uh, before starting here, let's uh, go to the configuration file. Here is the web XML file. So this is how the configuration looks like. The URL pattern used to access the, the web service, so resources. And uh, here there is just uh, one thing missing. That missing thing is the configuration that says um, where is the package that contains the web service. We should add this thing here. I just copied from uh, from uh, a PDF, so here is how it looks like. And here, see, here is where the package name, where the web services are stored, goes. Here we, its package, its package name is WS Resources. 
and that's it. This would be all the configuration needed. You can close this file and now prepare the prepare the web service. Uh, let's say my web service. So we will say resources slash my web service. This is how we will access the, the web service. Let's create uh, a method uh, for adding data. Keep it simple. Path to this method. Let it be add. It will be a post method. And it will consume Actually, it will not consume anything. Let's just keep it simple. Public void uh, add record. And uh, we can use various different types of parameters. We can, but let's, let's use, uh, for example, one of the most simple ones is the query parameter. So we don't need to create an interface, we can directly test it from the browser. So query parameter. Let the name of the first parameter be description. And take an string. Description. And the second, let it be query parameter. Name. String name. <coughs> and uh, before going on, let's test if uh, this method works. So we create a simple, simple uh, SOP. Just say description and uh, name. It is just to check that the parameters arrive correctly to the method. And then uh, we will continue. Okay, this is okay. Uh, the thing is running already, so we can go. And uh, here we will say resources. Add. Let me check. Yes. And uh, the query string. Let's say description. Equals to something. And name equals to something else. Not found. Let's see. Do we see this thing in the console? No. Let's create 
this to be to make it more visible. And try try again. Let's check. Maybe I made a mistake with the parameters. Uh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, I forgot something. I, I forgot the the strings. Uh, sorry about that. Let's see now. Let's check. Uh, no, we still not doesn't we don't see it. My web service. Okay, sorry. We we uh, we accessed the wrong path. I forgot my web service. Yeah, that's the thing. Let's check now. Let's clear the console and try again. Sorry. So, resources. Better to make sure 100%. Let's, check. Let's see. Resources. Sources, my web service. That's it. Uh, sorry, my web service. Then the method add add and the query string. It seems like uh, it is not working. I suspect that he expects also some kind of uh, consume or produce uh, uh, specification. So let's say produces. Let's say that this method produces something. Media. Media type. Yeah, some kind of response. We don't have to send it later, but let's say that it's does some kind of response, let's say text HTML. And let's say return an empty string. Sorry. That's it. Let's go to the browser and check again. The resource is not available. And we are not getting the message. Let's see. No, we are not getting the message. So, okay, I just figured out what was the problem. It, it's a very silly problem. We don't even we don't need to say consume, produce, or anything. We just need to change the method because we are doing this through the directly through the URL. We are triggering a get method and not a post method. That was why we were not uh, viewing our results. See, I'll change it to get and uh, let's test it. There it is. Access the values. There it is. As you see, I scroll down here. Here are the the methods being the method being called more and more and more times. Uh, so the thing is working. The thing is working. We are passing the parameters using the, some simple query param. Now we need to send those parameters to the database. So for that, let's inject um, the database accessor, so the entity facade. Insert code. 
and uh, let's say call enterprise bin since it is in a different package uh, and uh, this web service web services doesn't really uh, how do you call it uh, use injection with the, with disable context and dependency injection so it'll automatically a lookup will be performed so using JNDI so here it here it is here is the lookup automatically it's added by NetBeans I like putting it about here is our root facade object actually the interface and we can say root facade in object uh, insert record and insert some new record for that let's create it record from entities record equals new record <coughs> pass record and we use the setter method uh, the, the ID is automatic so we don't need to set the ID but it just set Okay, we don't have getters and setters in the in the entity class. I'm going to check that. It's not possible. And it is. Okay, we forgot to create the setters and the getters for the other variables. We will do it now. See, so for creating the entities automatically, it's not needed um, the getters and the setters because the annotations can can do it. So the data the table is created, but when accessing, we need it. So insert code, get run setters for both variables. Here it is. Add shift F, format. Go back to resource. And now, see, we have available the setters. A little bit. Record dot set yes set name name and record set description description okay now let's see what happens once uh, we do this same thing again but using the methods from uh, from the crude facade go back to the URL and submit let's see if there are not exceptions maybe we forgot something but let's see okay there is no errors in there. In the message displayed, it seems like he did something. Let's check the database. Refresh. Sorry. New data. Okay, here it is in the database. See, automatically the value of the primary key is incremented. Let's add some more data, and then we will retrieve this data. So to add this data, just go to the browser. And, uh, let's say record... Uh, Example, whatever. Uh, let's add something else. Okay. 
Now let's check see the database what is going on here. Refresh. Here is the data. So you see any client now implementing calling this method. It can be a .NET, PHP, anybody can interact with this database just using the URL. Uh, sometimes, well, it is we need to be careful who we give the URL to because we, maybe we don't want anybody to access the, the database. But uh, that's up to the to the clients how how they implement the the way they add to the databases, and uh, it is up to us to to be careful who we give the URL to. Uh, now let's create an, another, let's say, safer operation, that's the retrieve operation. See, to do, do the retrieve operation, we also use the, the get method. And uh, say path and say mm, get like this and uh, this time we are going to use a path parameter different than the query parameter to, to test different things so here this is the id and uh, we say public void sorry forgot something we want this to send us xml because that's the thing with the web services. Produces media type dot application XML and uh, let's say get record. In the same fashion as before we will use this time a path param uh, let's call it id and uh, it will be a string id and that's it uh, sop first please to just test everything is fine and okay we return response not void uh, here it is the one we want for now return now we will fix this in a second just want to test before going on so same thing just test that the ID is working and uh, this is how we pass path params go here the method sorry the method name let's check the method name uh, yeah. get and the path parameter let, let it be this say okay there's a little error here you can erase this let's see if we see something here is the value we pass to the the URL so the path param is working correctly now we are going to access the database using the entity the sorry the crude facade again crude facade dot do we say fine or did we say get I think yes get record see it requires a long so the first the best thing would be to cast because we get the string 
So we, it can be done in here. We can say new long. And uh, give the string. Here it is. We say dot trim. So make sure it is okay. And uh, This fruit facade will send us back the record. So let's say record record equals fruit facade dot record and uh, let's check do we get what do we get? Uh, system out print line. Let's say record dot get get name for example and uh, to make it visible let's just create an SOP later we will improve this go to the browser I have to yeah, the browser is opening I just open it manually here it is. Uh, let's just find the URL of our project. It is Georgia skills demo login and uh, get. Okay, we want to pass the ID one. So let's see what we get okay we get an internal server error let's see Okay, this is a class cast exception. We will fix this in a second. Uh, <clears throat> Let's see first, did the parameter arrive, arrive correctly? We already did this, but uh, I want to see if there are blank spaces or uh, something disturbing. So I'm going to just say ID and I'm going to comment this for now. Just access the URL again. Let's see what we see. Here it is, okay, the value is arriving correctly, but for some reason, uh, it cannot, it cannot um, access it, it cannot, uh, let's try passing it directly, maybe, no, it takes a uh, long, no, we need, we need this. Okay, let's parse it manually. I'm going to parse it manually. So here I'm going to create a long temp ID. And I'm going to say long dot parse long. And we're going to get the ID. Here is the thing was parsed manually and pass the temp ID. Let's see now if uh, this thing works. Here 
port dot get name go back to the browser ok no errors let's see the console wait it, it, it looks like it is still building let's try it again server error again let's check line by line what it says ok we have an EGV exception I think uh, the reason is uh, actually the next thing I wanted to show you, but uh, I wanted to do it a step by step, but it looks like it's not uh, possible to do it straight away. The record entity must be annotated as a JAXB object, so the Jersey framework can interact with it from the web service. So let's say XML root element. And in the methods, let's say XML element. XML main annotation. Also, all the getter methods we need to do like this. And now we go back to our web service. Here it is. And let's actually create the response. Let's create the response. Object. So we will do response. Dot response. Builder response builder equals now. Put it up here. And uh, we say the response builder. the record and if the record is different than now this means we got something from the database so response builder dot sorry response builder equals to response dot ok and pass the record else the response builder will be equals to response uh, we can say server error or uh, status say 404 not found or actually just better just leave it now 
So we will get some kind of exception if the wrong parameters are uh, passed. And now just return the record. That's it. Let's see. Let's clear the console and check what happens. Uh, sorry, record the response. Response builder dot build. That's the response. We return the response. Clear the console. And uh, go to the browser again. Okay, it is. Let's wait until it builds. Clear. And try it. Let's see, do we get some XML? No. Okay, the thing we, because we did some uh, changes on the back end, we probably need to restart the server. So I'm going to restart and build again. Hopefully, this will fix the thing. Let's check. Uh, our find method, get record, okay, and our crude facade, okay, everything is looks fine here to me. So we, let's build again. Okay, I just rebuild the thing, and I'm going to test, test from the browser. Uh, the thing should be fixed if it's like I expect. Uh, yes, here it is. The problem was that when we do sometimes uh, some kind of uh, change on the entities, uh, because that is very, let's say, in the back end, the changes are not seen automatically, and we need to restart. So anyway, it's good we saw that exception, so we can understand the reason. Here it is. So this is how I implemented the, the method to retrieve from the database. And see, it is up to the client now how which uh, ID passes. We are now the second, the third. So see, we are now interacting with our database from the browser. Well, it's a web service, so the URL. That's the see, no pointer exception because there is no entry with this uh, with this um, ID. So that's that's it. I I hope this uh, is useful. I didn't want to cut pieces of this video. I just wanted to put it online raw so you can see the whole process of developing software and also the problems on the way we, that we face sometimes and uh, the approach to solve those problems. Web services, uh, the Java Persistence API, the Enterprise Java Beans, uh, those enterprise technologies are uh, really wide fields for exploring and uh, this demo was just a very, a very simple uh, example of uh, how things are done in in real life, but there are lots, lots of topic more to discuss. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.